Flying insects can make rapid turns, land on walls and ceilings, and fly upside down under adverse conditions. Engineers use them for inspiration and try to replicate their flying performances. So one of our recent prototypes is based upon a housefly, and it has uh, four primary mechanical and aeromechanical components. And they're all actually analogous to the uh, flight components of an actual fly. And so the four are uh, an actuator, which is analogous to the power muscles of, of the insect, uh, a transmission system, which is analogous to the thorax of the insect, which just takes the actuator motions and maps those to the uh, desired wing trajectories. And then the airfoils are the wings and an exoskeleton, which acts as the airframe or the mechanical ground, which ties everything together. That device that I'm describing weighs uh, 60 milligrams, which is approximately the weight of a, of a housefly, has a three centimeter wingspan, uh, is able to beat its wings uh, at about 110 times a second, uh, and is able to actually reproduce uh, wing trajectories that are nearly identical to uh, what you'd see in a, in a fly during hover conditions. Wood is now looking for a solution to have his robots fly without being linked to an external source of power. To make the potential applications come true, he collaborates with some other labs in Harvard. Part of the, the research that we do with um, Rob Wood is looking at the fly robots or micro-insect robots and saying, OK, these would be great things to put into an environment, into nature. They could coexist with real life forms. But can they be as robust as life forms and sort of take care of nature? So how do we get them to cooperate? We envision that, let's say, firefighters or rescue workers could have tens of thousands of these flies in their backpacks and not even know it because they're so lightweight, wouldn't hinder them at all. And then once they got to a disaster site, they could release these flies by the thousands, um, and they would effectively act as, as a swarm of flies, and they would dis be dispersed over the, the disaster area and perhaps uh, search around for crevices or corridors which they could fly down, uh, and then disperse themselves within the disaster area. Equipped with some carbon dioxide or temperature sensors, the robots would fly around trying to find survivors. To master this task with efficiency, they would follow very simple routes to communicate with each other. So this is sort of the antithesis of artificial intelligence, meaning that no fly is going to be able to make complex decisions on their own. Um, and, and, and that's just basically because, well, they're not going to be able to carry around a lot of computational power. They're not going to be able to carry around a Pentium. So uh, instead, the idea is to have very simple local rules that, are, that, are, that the fly is, is operating under. Um, and by the uh, collective uh, of these rules, of these agents performing these rules, if the rule is designed properly, then you get some complex behavior from the swarm as a whole. Imagine that each robot had a light on it, okay? And it can, and it has eyes that can detect just this light, not very interesting visual scenes, just a simple wavelength of light that is pointing all the way around. So imagine that this was your robot, and it has like a bulb at the top, and then it can see with eyes all around. Now imagine that it sees a light over here, and it, it knows sort of what its body orientation is. It can say, oh, I want to move towards this light, and then sort of go in that direction. So one of the things now you can imagine is now I can create flashing patterns. And those patterns communicate messages. Maybe there's not a lot of messages I can communicate. Maybe my messages would be, come closer, go away, <laughs> or um, I've seen something really important. So a very limited vocabulary. But we could encode that vocabulary in flashing patterns. There will be some time before a swarm of fly robots comes and rescue you. The next step for Wood and Nakbal will be testing some chemical sensors. I'm waiting for the ant robot that, you know, takes care of my plants so that I don't have to do any... Well, I like gardening, but, you know, the ant robot that walks around and constantly adds fertilizer to my plants by testing what the soil is like and making sure. I want to see that soon, like in the next five years. I think uh, Rob and I have talked about having a garden in the lab and having these things move around and actually do some gardening for us. And if we can do that, I think we're not that far away um, from putting them outside and, and rescuing you with a fly. <laughs>